Hi everyone. Today video is on .NET 5 MVC application RAD operations using NT framework core. So this video is for the absolute beginners. So who are interested to learn MVC, uh, this video will be helpful for them. So if you have already knowledge on MVC from the previous versions like .NET Core 2 or 3, uh, please don't waste your time by watching this video. It is it is no new things is defined in .NET 5 as well because all are same from .NET 2, .NET 3, .NET 5. So this video is only for targeted audience or like absolute beginners of the .NET 5 MVC. Okay. So before creating .NET sample, I want to mention that I have already made a blog regarding this session. So this is the blog. So the link will be available in the description under the video. So if anyone want to go through blog, can check the link in the description. Okay. So let's jump into creating the project. So here I am using uh, Visual Studio Code Editor. Okay. And I am going to use .NET CLI command for creating my project. So if you are <coughs> so if you are using visual studio then please make sure to have visual studio 2019 latest version because only latest version only can build the dotnet 5 application okay and for visual studio 2019 users it is very simple go to the create project option and there it will open a pop up where it will show different number of templates like uh, razor pages web api mvc in that please select the template like asp.net web core in brackets model view controller you can see one option so please select that option to create the project okay so since i am using dotnet cli so dotnet cli can be created as dotnet new and my template type is mvc and my project name see here you can see template name asp.net core web app in brackets model view controller so same name you can seen as a option in Visual Studio 2019. Okay, so please, Visual Studio 19 users, please select the template name shows like this. Okay, so without uh, uh, model view controller, also you will see one option uh, that is for Razor Pages. So don't select that option. Okay, so MVC, you must select the template type like this for Visual Studio Code or .NET CLI users. You can create like this what I have given the command. Okay. So my project has been successfully created. Let me open my project in Visual Studio Code Editor. Okay. This is our project, and here you can see target framework. Okay. So this is in the .cs project file. This project. Okay. Before starting to create CRUD operations, let me walk through the application. So once you have created, you will get the, the project like this. Like you can see controllers, models, and views, and WW root. So if I want to go through what is MVC. So actually, MVC is a model view controller. Okay. It is a design pattern. Okay, are a architectural pattern. So what it will do? It will splits the single UI project into three modules like controller, model, and view. Okay, so what is the purpose of controller? Purpose of controller is uh, whenever user requests the our application, requested our application, the request first gets entered into the controller. So inside of the controller, we are going to write our uh, business logic or 
data consumption data consumption is nothing but uh, querying the data from the database so all the logic will be executed inside of the controller okay once the uh, desired job is finished inside of the controller what it will do all the results whatever controller did will be pushed into the model object okay and then finally what uh, controller will do controller will pick up a view file and pass the uh, model object that contains all the required data to be binded okay that is the role of the controller so next coming to the view view is nothing but the html and it will depends upon the model where model will contain the all the data from data that to be binded so model will uses the model so, i'm sorry view will uses the model data to bind some dynamic data into the html okay so finally model is nothing but the data transfer object from the controller to the view so this is the mvc pattern working pattern so from here we can understood a controller depends upon model and view whereas view depends upon model and uh, model depends upon nothing it's just a mediator between the controller and the view so here from this object you can see controller depends upon view and model view depends upon the model okay so wha what is the benefit of this model so with with the separation which with the separation into three different modules our code will be much more cleaner right and each module has its own responsibility like controller is to fetch the data model is to transfer the data and the view is to render the output like that each one have its own uh, responsibility so our code will be much cleaner and testable okay so that is the uh, architecture or the pattern uh, about the mvc okay so now you can see the from the folders here you have folder like controller model view which are nothing but this diagram what they represent okay I want to walk through some of the basic things that we have to know when we run our mvc application okay so whenever we started our dotnet 5 mvc application this file gets executed okay program.cs file see this uh, create host builder and create builders are get loaded here and they will get run so this is the uh, initial initiating point of our application program.cs file okay next startup.cs file what it will contains so startup.cs files contains all the service that need to be registered for the dependency injection as well as the uh, request layers okay middlewares so this this file is help to start or run our application on the server okay that's it this program.cs file work is finished next whenever whenever request comes so this is the part gets executed sequentially see these are the middlewares app.use developer exception page use htc http redirection static files use routing all these are the middleware so whenever the request comes user request comes sequentially these will get executed okay so in this uh, few things we have to know like means endpoint routing okay so use endpoint what it will do means uh, it will here it will con we can configure our routes so we can have n number of uh, map controller but it is a map controller route okay so like this you can configure you can name different like test 
and you can give your own pattern like uh, which uh, action method it should go like that you can define here okay so like this you can define your routes so this kind of routing is called convention based routing okay uh, there will be an, one more routing so to know that we should know about the controller so inside of controller uh, we will have action methods see here one action method here one action so these actions are nothing but per request one action method gets executed okay see if i i requested index uh, route then index action method gets executed if i requested privacy route privacy action method gets executed so per request one action method will be executed so what i can do uh, if you want custom attribute routing you can directly give route here so route and you can specify like home controller right so i want to uh, rename it like test okay now route should contain test and you can define your uh, path as well in co action controller as well like uh, this is index right route uh, test my index so now to access this our url should be something like example.com slash test slash my index can execute this row so like this also we can configure this is called attribute routing okay uh, but i can use uh, default convention based routing okay by default so in convention based routing also uh, you can add a number of map controller route endpoints uh, by leaving this also it will work by default uh, here we have configured right pattern like we should have uh, one two parts of path means https slash uh, example dot com slash part one part two. so with this pattern matching this url gets pattern matched by default okay so uh, what i want to say means we we can we can have single endpoints like this default endpoint only we can work as well in mvc because it will automatically match the first part as controller name and second part as uh, action name okay so with the single uh, default endpoint only we can run our entire uh, application but, but if you want to add also we can add here or we can add attribute routing as well and uh, here it will support this pattern matching also supports this route this route as a home route why because there is no path part one and part two that means they are empty so here pattern matching we have defined default values for the empty like uh, if you know uh, part one part two paths are exist in the route then what it will do it will match see default controller is home and default page index so like this our uh, uh, main url can go to our home page okay so that's how routing will work that's the use of this uh, use and point uh, middleware and you can see one more routing here app routing so this is like a uh, this should come before the endpoint routing and the purpose of this app routing is it enables or loads the all the registered route data means if you register here or attribute level what it will do when the request comes when this middleware hits it will load all them as a route table instead of the route table okay so this use endpoint what will it will do means it's just a trigger from that route table okay it's navigate to the specific controller so that is the difference between the use routing and use endpoint so that's all about the middleware 
and one more thing i want to show you is here in configure services this method is used to register all the dependency services to work with dependency injection so one of the main default service here registered is add controller view with views this service is for our mvc application injection okay and that's about the startup file next thing is i have explained controller rails so model will contains our model objects and uh, views so coming to views uh, we should know few default files like uh, view imports so here uh, you can uh, add tag helper namespaces or uh, your file namespaces so we can use their names directly instead of using with the fully qualified names okay so that is the use of view import and view start will contain the layout name layout name layout uh, name so what is layout layout means nothing but the master template means it will contains common features of your page like header footer okay so here you can specify the name of your layout default lay, uh, master layout name is underscore layout that means if you go to shared folder this is the master layout so you can have your own custom layout as well okay if you want you can uh, do it dynamically also by fetching data from the database also okay so this is layout and here there will be a one razor tag that is render body so this is nothing but the remaining body content that will display into our page so for suppose in the home view we have index page and privacy pages so when our request comes inside of this master page our if i requested index page index page content will be rendered here if i requested privacy page privacy page content will be rendered here in this area main tag because of this render body tag body rather syntax okay so uh and next ww root fault trees uh for uh, saving the js files and css files okay if you you should you must save any css file js file or images files or any static file into this ww root only if you uh, saved those files outside of this folder they won't get deployed into your server on deployment process so that is why static files always must be saved into the ww root folder okay and finally next thing is app setting development json so you will have different environmental based json files okay so this is app setting development json for uh, learning development is okay for production you will have file like app setting dot production dot json file okay so that's about the overview on our mvc application okay now i want to create a crud crud based sample in this mvc application so first for uh, data communication to communicate with uh, to communicate uh, or fetching the data from the database what we're going to use means entity framework code okay see Entity framework query is a ORM framework. ORM framework means object relational mapping framework. For suppose, I have a database. I will I have a table like student. Okay. So to communicate our application using entity framework my database, what should I have means I should have relevant table class means I have student table right. So I should have a student Poco class with that class should contains property names that should match with my table column name so by doing that okay we can uh, mapping means table is mapped with c sharp class okay with the help of ef core so ef core what it will do means in ef core we will create all table uh, uh, all all tables in the database as a classes in uh, what i can say classes in our project then we will create one more class that is called db context database context 
so that db context by with the help of nt framework will uh, manages all the table classes so db context acts as a database in in our application set of our application okay that is the use of nt framework code so there are several uh, approaches can be used with the nt framework core like uh, database first approach code first approach and code first with existing database uh, most uh, best way is to use the code first with the existing database okay so in my sample also i am going to use the code first with existing database code first with existing database is nothing but we can create a poker class and we can communicate with the existing database directly very simple is that one okay so to enable ef core we need to install two libraries that is provided by microsoft like uh, ef core nuget and as well as the ef core sql server extension nuget so let's install them first one is microsoft nt framework core another one is microsoft nt framework core dot sql server we need to install both of them okay visual studio users copy the command from package manager or you can also use the uh, ui package installer that is existing visual studio itself and uh, i am using dotnet cli right so i am going to copy these commands so let's install the nt framework core so now let's install sql server package so both the nt framework packages has been successfully installed okay now in my local in sql chat sql management studio i have created a table like gadgets okay this is my gadgets uh, table so if you want to follow my steps please copy this uh, entire sql command and run it into your database okay so i have already created this table so what i have explained previously we are going to use code first with existing database right so we in nt framework we have to create poker classes that represents our table right so first let's create a so here my table is a gadgets right let's create a gadgets class so let me create a folder like data okay inside of data create another folder like entities so this folder i am going to add all my table classes here okay now add okay this is my gadgets class so all the properties in this class must match with our table column name okay so to save some text let me copy those all properties from my code snippet which i have already created okay my finally uh, table class look like this okay these all represents table columns so in nt framework to manage all these poker classes we need one parent class that is nothing but a db context so if you want to compare db context with sql it's act like a database okay so previously we have added class in entities folder right now go to data folder so add inside of the data folder okay like maybe text so this is our db context currently it is normal class only to make it db context we must inherit a db context class from the nt framework so let me copy the code snippet of my db context to save some time so so like this my db context look like so it should be inherited from the db context so let's import the namespace see microsoft.nt framework code see now our class my old db context becomes the uh, db context because it inheriting the original db context that derived from the microsoft nt framework core okay so here see constructor and here there are configurations so these configurations uh, will be loaded from the uh, our app settings so app settings so these app settings how to read into the code will be 
explain in the next step okay so these options are nothing but like connection string all those configurations are injecting and passing to the base class base class is nothing but this db context okay so here let's import my model namespace so inside of db context we have to register our table class like this if you have n number of table classes we should inherit all those n number of table classes okay something like if i have another table like test then i need to inherit like this test and test okay like that you need to register all the classes uh, into your db context then only we can access or communicate with the database okay that's it about our uh, db context now i need to register my db context into da services so that i can easily inject this uh, db context wherever i want okay so for that let's go to startup here i need to register so let let me copy my snippet of code for registering the db context so like this my service registration look like this okay so let's import the namespace of my context and let's import the entity framework for okay, here what i am doing here i am configuring the connection string see uh, this configuration dot get connection will automatically fix the connection property in the app settings okay so if i go to development here i haven't created right first let's me add my connection string so i am configuring my sql connection string here okay so this connection string property is a default property that can be understand by the dotnet core framework inside of this we can create our custom property names and we can assign our uh, connection strings so coming to startup see configurations dot connection strings so this method what it will do it will checks for this connection string object in the configuration okay so from there what we are saying uh, grab the value of my my db context my db connection property so here i have created my db connection property so this value gets loaded by the framework on service registration okay now if you go to db context here uh, on creating the instance of the db context in the constructor some options are passing right those options are nothing but these options what we will configure here okay uh, most commonly we will configure connection string okay so that's about the uh, registering the db context in the da and the uh, setting up the connection string so far we have done with dealing with entity framework core and creating the db context for for our communication okay now let's jump into our uh, mvc so i want to communicate uh, with my table right so in mvc we know the request entering the module is first module is controller so first we need to create a controller so in the controllers okay add a new controller like gadgets controller dot cs okay this is my controller class like this it will look so to make this is as a controller mvc controller we need to inherit some base controller like microsoft asp.net code.mvc okay and the controller naming convention should be its name and it's prefixed with controller so whenever a route comes uh its name should be up to here only we need to give specify not like uh, gadgets controller we should not give okay framework will recognize this as a route name okay if you use convention based routing okay uh, and we know in a controller for a request action method will be executed so uh, let's create a i action method and i will name action method like index okay okay so our goal is to create crud operation right so i have already 
add some dummy data into my table. So first what I will do, I will display the data means I will work on read operation first. Okay, so this is my read operation index uh, action method where I am going to read all data from the table and I am going to render that data into the MVC view as some boots in the bootstrap table. Okay. So where we have to get uh, data means from database. So in entity framework, we can communicate with the DB context for fetching the data. So here we need to get or initialize the um, DB context. For that, we can inject it here. So what I will do, read only. Okay, I'm going to inject into my constructor. Okay, so I have successfully injected my constructor and so this an index method what type of request it is get request so it is always good to decorate with them with the http attribute so i can decorate it like http get okay so this represents the type of request invoking this method okay so let's fetch all data from the database so to do that my db context and gadgets so i can query here so i want all data right so i can say like to list async extension method so for that i need to import entity framework code so what it will do means implicitly what it will generate means select star from gadgets table so this entity framework will generate this raw query and send to the server so this means it will get all the data from the service so this represents this li in, uh, this linky query represents uh, this sql server query okay so let me grab all my data into a variable Okay, if you recall what is MVC controller controller queries database and uh, gets the data and that data will be stored into the model. So I want to store it into model, right? So first let's create a model for it. So go to model folder. I will name like gadget containers model.cs okay this is my model class so i want to store my data fetched into this model class okay what i am getting i am getting a list of gadgets right so here i forget one thing uh, here i am using asynchronous right so i must await it and it should be async and and shape type should be encapsulated in the task type okay fine yes so if you hover here you can see collection of gadgets i am expecting so what i will do here i will create a property public gadgets import link queue namespace and then my model namespace okay so now what i will do where model equal to new gadget 
and import namespace. So its property like all gadgets equal to all gadget. So I have saved my data into my model. Now finally I can pick a view and pass model. So here overloaded method you can pass view name and my model. Okay. So that's the uh, code we need to generate in our index action method in the controller. So let's create a view now. So to create view, we must follow some guidelines. So where it is uh, uh, controller gadgets controller. That means in view model, first we need to create a folder name with our model. Okay. And in that model, in that folder, I can create whatever file name I want to create. So in general, view name uh, generally created with the name of action method. So I am following that conventionally, but you can create any name. Okay. So index.cshtml, I have created it. This is my view. So what I have to do, if I created with same name, I no need to specify explicitly. If you created another name like something that CS HTML, then you need to specify the name. But I am specifying the name anyway. Okay. I want to load the index.cs HTML and I want to pass the model to that index.cs HTML. Okay. So that's about the controller. Now coming to the view model. So it must read the uh, model object that was sent by the uh, controller right for that we need to uh, register the model type so what is my model type model type is nothing but gadgets container model okay so i have different type here i want to bind it to the uh, bootstrap table so here go to docs Layouts. See inside of the contents, go to tables. So let's design this kind of table. Okay. And let's select the content from here. Okay, let's paste it over here. So go to table head. Let's format first. Okay. So what I will do, I will open my class model. So I want ID here. So I am taking the names from my columns. Okay. Product name so this is my header for this i want brand first i want one more type right so i can choose type okay so move aside and uh, here trs remove all the trs i just need one so now we want to loop the table group Rows, right for that we will have razors index you can write c sharp expressions or queries in directly uh, in cs uh, html okay razor page with the help of prefix with at the rate okay so it will give all the syntax like c sharp class only but we need to specify the at the rate should be prefixed so means prefixing at the rate means that is c sharp expression so here I can specify model dot all gadgets. Okay. So copy this into the loop. So here you get uh, looped. Okay. So let's bind the individual property like item dot id. Okay. At the rate item dot uh, product name. 
ओके एट द रेट आइटम डॉट ब्रांड ओके एट द रेट आइटम डॉट कॉस्ट ओके लेट्स क्रिएट वन मोर टी डी एट द रेट आइटम डॉट टाइप ओके आई थिंक वी आर गुड दैट्स ऑल अबाउट द रीड ऑपरेशन इन एम वी सी ओके सो वॉट वी आर डूइंग इन रीड वी सिंपली क्रिएटेड एक्शन मेथड दिस इज एक्शन मेथड एक्सिक्यूटेड फॉर माई गेट रिक्वेस्ट so here i am getting the data and dumping the data into the model and invoking the view by passing the model so inside of the model we define the type of the model and using bootstrap table we are binding our data okay so uh, if you go to startup.cs here we have convention based routing right means two paths must be specified here okay so this is optional see here nullable question mark means that can be added or can, that can be avoided okay so with this convention based routing first part will be name of the controller second part will be name of the action method that's why routing will be configured okay let's run the project so this is my home page let's navigate to so what is my controller name gadgets okay so action name index so navigate gadgets see how nicely my table is rendered uh, let me do one thing let's import namespace using system dot link you okay and i want to sort the order so i want to get latest uh, record on top okay order by descending okay by id so let's save it and reload the page see now we are getting a latest record on top okay uh, let's do create operation okay so for that create operation okay so inside of the create so now uh, for a read operation we have single action method but create operation we will have two action method why two action methods okay so let's do it now public async need async here i action and uh, i can name it like create this is my index method okay so this request gets ex uh, executed when i am requesting for http request get method okay so here i can return a view and view name if you pass here i don't pass model because in create i will have form empty form right in create i will have empty form there is no data to display on the model so there is nothing here to me pass okay in, for this sample but in real time you may want to pass if you want to pass you can load some data and you can pass here i will have simple empty form right i want to create it's a get request so whenever create route is called from browser what it will do it will simply loads the form okay so let me name my form, uh, view like create i will create later in next step only so it just loads the create.cs html nothing it will do because i want empty form right so now what we will do create a file like 
create dot CSHTML. Okay. So there is no model to pass here. And I want to create a form now. So let's go to Bootstrap and go to Forms and Overview. Okay, scroll down. Okay, copy this form and paste it here. Okay, so I don't have any validations for now for this demo. Remove this ID and uh, here I will write like label txt product name. So to create what type of fields open my gadgets class. So for this field, we need to create fields here for this property. ID we don't need while create because ID will be zero, right? It is a new record. So there is no input field for ID. Okay, ID. Okay. So. <laughs> Okay, and this field is my product. Okay, this is my field. Sorry, product name. So this is my field. What I will do? I will remove all these divs. So how how many properties I have? One, two, three. So let's duplicate it three more times. Okay. So simply, so this is for brand. So change type to text, all fields. Okay, and txt brand and txt cost. These names you can specify anything, just I am following text box and its name. Text type any name you can give HTML attributes only. This doesn't belong to server side. Okay. So this field is brand. Okay. This field is uh, cost. And this field is uh, type. Okay. Here from the controller, we are not passing any model. But, but here we need to specify the type of model i will create gadgets model dot cs okay so this is my gadgets model class so here what i will do i will copy all the properties from my gadgets class paste it here Okay, model gadget. Model. Okay, so this is my gadget model. So why I am using gadget model means here I need to add a razor uh, attribute like ASP for why a this ASP for and one more thing. Please give exact name. That was in our gadgets model. Okay. If you have any doubt, not gadgets model. So what I yes, I will use this model in my posting. Okay, 
so use these names in the ASP for so I have given brand I have given brand next cost yes for cost or ASP for type okay so give as it is names of the property names of the gadget model we have created all the form fields and I, we are also using ASP for attribute why this ASP for attribute so first let's run the application let's go to our application so this is my create method if you inspect here see name attribute product name name attribute brand name attribute cost and name attribute type so in an ht in a form name attribute must and should be there okay so without name attribute uh, form data cannot be read by the server okay so to to read the name attribute we should specify asp for asp for automatically generate the name attribute by default so not only this okay if you have any added any validations okay that also will be binded into the uh, html so that validation is not in this concept okay for that also the asp for will be useful <sighs> that's our form so this form must be posted right so where it should be posted so form i need to specify method like post okay so it should be posted so in the controller i need to create one more public i action result okay create i will overload this method like gadget model model okay so this is http post request so this will be ex uh, executed when we form posted okay so this is for rendering the form this is for posting the form data and now what i will do i will create the uh, table model gadgets new gadget equal to i need to map all my properties into my table model okay so what i will do brand model dot brand or not semicolon comma product name model dot product name cost model dot cost and finally type i have prepared my table model so I can save it to the database. So to save it into the database, what I have to do? My old DB context gadgets dot add. I can pass my object. Okay. New gadget. New gadget. Save changes async. So I can await it, and I can async task okay and return redirect to action index okay this is my logic so what i am doing in the post method so i have specified read this asp for generate a name attribute so these properties all the name attribute properties will be dumped into this model okay so once we got the model what we are doing we are mapping to the table model see this is my view model this is my table class so mapping all the data from the view model into my table class once that is mapped we are adding to the gadgets and saving to the database once it is successfully saved we are redirecting to this action method to be loaded okay means after saving we will redirect to the our index page okay 
so I think that's fair enough. Okay, so let's run the application. So it is already running. So once refresh, so I will add one plus nine pro brand one plus. type mobile so i am posting okay i am clicking this uh, submit so to view our uh, uh, http calls what i will do clear this and select all and check on preserve log then only you can see the request see it is posting data to the create post okay See, my record is successfully added. And if you go here, see, it is invoked my create post, HTTP post, request method is HTTP post. That means it will hit this action method, HTTP post request. Okay. And you can see form data, posting form data, what type of form data it is posting? Product name, brand. So these all types of data will be form data will be injected into this model, a view model class property. Okay. So 302 means redirected. Why it is 302 redirected? Because after saying we are redirecting to this index dot model. The next request is our gadgets slash gadgets. Okay. We are done with the create operation. Okay. So now we have to uh, do edit operation so similar to cre create edit also we will have http post and http uh, po get and http post requests so first let's create the action methods so public think i action result edit okay So uh, this is HTTP get and it will have one query parameter ID because from the based on this ID, I am going to fetch the data from the database and I will return that data. Uh, I will save the data into the view model and I will pass that uh, view model to the view so that you can render the fields with the uh, populate the fields with the data that need to be edited. Okay. And say like where gadget equal to my old DB contest gadgets where ID equal to equal to ID. Okay, and select new gadget. I want to dump the data into the gadget model, so I can use select query. So all the this is normal gadgets table class. I am dumping the data into gadget model. So that is the help of select query. It is link you extension method. Okay, so here I can map all the data into my uh, gadget model and I want dot first dot default async okay so I can await it so if at all if gadget is not found means the requested edit uh, record is not there gadget equal to equal to null let me name it like model it is more meaningful model if model no data in database then simply redirect to index uh, action action like
okay if data exists i want to load edit form so return view edit pass my model okay this is my http request so it should be encapsulated in task okay so this is my edit so in edit id is read from the query parameter and uh, view fetching the data and uh, dumping into the gadget model so if the model is empty redirect to action action method like index if not empty redirecting to edit edit form so first let's create our edit form so edit will contains as it is html of the form okay so these product names i have mentioned it loads from the gadget side right? so already we are posting the model okay so in the edit form as it is in the create form you can copy paste okay but only thing is we can have hidden field so that is for id and it should be hidden because on form posting this value will be crucial because if id exist means it is editable record okay so we should maintain the id in hidden field in the edit form so other than this there is no changes required for this form edit is as it is of the create html form only changes we need to add the hidden field of the id okay now let's create the http post action method uh, okay here i forgot to one more thing whenever post request is there whenever post request is there validate entry forgery token this decorated should be there because it will be like a one protection layer okay this data is coming from the trusted page like that so this anti forgery token is it some encrypted value that going to be rendered on our page so let me show you so if you go to create page there you can see sorry gadgets dash create here there will be one uh, token see input field request verification token this hidden field is already added by the server itself okay so if we decorate our po not create method okay for post request if we decorate along with posting the model it is also validate the this field value okay so the attribute will validate this hidden value this by default generates and bind by the added by our server itself okay on every get request we will have this uh, field hidden field on every post this can be validated by using this validate anti forgery token attribute okay so i forgot that one so now i will create a edit post request public async task I action result edit it is a overloaded method right so i should have model my gadgets model okay model so here i need to specify type of request http post so since it is a http post request i can validate my anti forgery token okay and uh, so what i can do mm, so let's copy this data i need to map right i need to map all my model data into my table class so only changes i also want to map the id which is available in the hidden field model.id okay now i got table class i can change name like gadget 
I can call update method directly on context. I can pass my model and I can save changes setting. Wait. Once it is successfully edit is saved, I want to redirect to my listing page. So copy this and return. So what I am doing in post method, I have created a post and this will read the form data just like create, create post method if you observe same, same right, so same it will be there, since it is a post request I can add validate anti forgery token and then mapping my gadgets model data into my table class model and using the update method I am inserting my data to be updated and calling save async. Next, I am redirecting to my index page. So, I think that's enough to work with edit operation. So, let's okay. So, we have small change in index.html. Like, I can have one more row. Actions. Here, I'll add a button, edit button. Okay. So I'll use anchor tag and I will apply button classes. Okay. Edit and href. Gadgets and edit and question mark ID equal to let's see how it will format okay and our application building okay it's up so let's go to all pages or not index Colors are not applying. Let's give primary. So, edit button is coming. So, if you observe here down, here observe. Once I have over on button, here corner right side observe. You can find the path like edit type 1 id value so what i will do here price is zero right for seven zero double one i will edit the price i will edit like 500 and also i will uh, name like laptop okay so i am posting this data means uh, this post this is get right this post must be executed and you can also observe right the form is auto filled okay now i am posting the edit form so 711 laptop and its price 5000 updated successfully okay its brand is lenovo let's change the brand as well lenovo so 7011 thinkpad lenovo so we are successfully updated so you know what we have done we have uh, understand read operator read operation in mvc create operation and update operation okay now one final remaining operation is delete operation okay so for delete operation there won't be get request okay but there will be a post request for deleting okay if you want okay 
delete so that should be post request okay and here i need to pass id it since it is a post request i need to use validate anti forgery token where gadget to delete folder gadgets where id equal to id first our default is sync okay. all right Async task. Okay. So you gadget to delete not equal to null. Then what we will do? We will simply delete it from the database. For that, you can call method like remove and pass the object you want to delete. Okay, and call save changes async. So finally, I want to navigate to this page only. Okay, so what we are doing? It is a post request. So based on id we are fetching the record to delete once the record is exist we are deleting the record and read it into index.page why we are not having get request because what i will do i will do within the this listing page i will open up a pop-up when i click on a delete button you will have a delete button instead of the edit when i click on it it will it will show a confirmation bootstrap model okay on that confirmation bootstrap model if we confirm confirm to delete then it will call this post method okay that's why we don't have the uh, get delete page okay so what i have to do go to index i want delete button right so here i will use button itself not anchor tag okay button plus btn btn danger delete here i will have on click method and i will have a method like delete gadget and in that method i will pass my item dot id okay so this is my javascript method okay so now what i will do i have to go to ww root folder and js you will see a one default site js file write your javascript code here what i will do i will create that method okay yeah, ID. okay so this is my javascript function now i want to add bootstrap model so go to bootstrap and components okay and here model so in the components go to models the models let's copy this and go to index html go to down paste it here okay delete i don't want button i will name like delete gadget model okay this is my id and here I want to ch some changes like model header. I don't have any model header. Inside of the model body, I will add some h4 tag. Confirm to delete. Okay. So close means I don't want to delete. Here I will add button like delete confirm and also I want to encapsulate with this with a form tag. Okay. 
because on clicking this button only our uh, form post should be executed that's why i'm encapsulating it inside of the but uh, form tag and method will be post so for this form url will be dynamically appended by the javascript code that we will write slowly and i want to add some id like delete form okay so first let's open the pop-up okay so for that go to js uh, that here what i can do dollar dot hash what is my model name delete model model and specify like show okay so let's reload our page and click on delete button see i am getting model means this script code open up in my model okay so first thing i want to uh, work this close button so what i will do okay function copy this and hide okay and call this method on this on click Page is reloading. Just wait a second. Okay. Delete. Okay. Hide. Okay, close button is working. Now inspect the delete form. Here you can see form post, and uh, here we want to add a URL. So to add the URL, let's frame. So let URL equal to hash gadget slash delete query ID equal to plus id that is my let form element equal to document dot get element by id okay so what is my form name this form name delete form okay pass it and form ele dot set element attribute like action for action attribute we need to pass our url here that's it it will now delete my record so let's refresh and once inspect the element see so sorry open pop-up and inspect the delete button here my url is framed here for the form if i so i want to delete this latest record so click and click on delete Nothing happening why sorry it should be submit submit only form post it should not be button okay and also change it to red color okay 
I want to record delete the record first record that is 14 002. I am clicking delete. So to view the network calls, clear all these things. Okay, click on delete. See 402 deleted. If you go to network calls, see here my post method is executed. So post method means this one. So it deleted and redirect back to our index page. So our index page is nothing but the gadgets. That's why it is loading. Okay, let's delete one more 8002. Okay, so that's it. Our current operations in MVC using .NET 5 framework. Okay, I think this video has delivered some useful information to you all. So if you like my video, please do subscribe to my channel. We'll meet you soon with the new videos. Until then, signing off.